In 2010, a series of revolutions began to spring up across the Middle East known as the Arab Spring. Revolutions formed in Egypt, Tunisia, Yemen, and eventually Syria. This conflict eventually grew larger, resulting in a convoluted war, a civil war. Led by President Bashar al-Assad, the Syrian government wages war with the many faces of the Syrian opposition. This conflict also resulted in an interesting array of improvised weapons as depicted here, such as artillery shells and other explosive ordnance. One particular weapon we noticed caught our attention. So, we decided to build one. Howdy folks, welcome to another episode of Ordnance Lab. I'm Sean and today we're gonna to be talking about Hell Cannons, which are a series of improvised mortars typically found in the Syrian conflict. And our goal here is to recreate that. Part of the services we offer, this is a total advertisement, is the ability to replicate a threat, be that some sort of improvised threat that you'd find on the contemporary battlefield, be that roadside bombs, improvised mortars such as this, also factory munitions such as claymores, um, grenades, and we're working on an RPG simulator also. So lots of things, there's pretty much no threat that we can't uh, replicate. Now, with this right here, what this is, is that whenever, like the first, during uh, OIF-1, Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003, there were munitions everywhere. The Saddam regime had ammo caches and ammunition dumps just scattered all over the country. So the insurgency was able to easily find standard military munitions. So 155 rounds were really popular for IEDs, standard explosives, all kinds of stuff was able to be used. But as the conflict continued and the interdictions were done for the IED, manuf the materials, the, um, the stuff that was used to initiate it, all kinds of different things were done to remove the sources for standard military munitions, and the insurgents were forced to improvise, and people are pretty smart. They can figure out a lot of things, how to make weapons out of all sorts of things. In the Syrian conflict, it's been a similar thing, where the resistance forces have been able, or uh, all types of uh, excuse me, all types of insurgent forces against the government have had to improvise munitions as both the ISIS guys and also the counter regime fighters. There's a million different players in that conflict. One of the ones that they've been able to replicate is the Hell Cannon, the, these mortars right here, where they're able to take things such as propane tanks and whatnot and able to turn them into a somewhat accurate um, uh, indirect fire munition. Now, and as always, here at Ordnance Lab, this is not a political channel. We're not here talking about politics or anything else. We're just discussing, hey, here's what the weapons do. Nothing else related to it. We're going to go out there. We're going to fire some of these off. We're going to test it right now where it's not fused and doesn't have any sort of payload. We're just going to see what happens for how far it goes. And then we're going to load it up with some um, sand to see how far it goes with the weight. And then we'll load it up with explosives and make a real live round. Now, as we always like to say that um, we don't do any gunsmithing that goes beyond uh, a hand, <laughs> Dremel and a hammer. So we've got Cody here with Weapon Genetics who fabricated this here Hell Cannon, which is actually um, legally, this is no different than a black powder cannon and is not controlled as a firearm by ATF because it's a muzzle loading black powder cannon. And Cody, you can talk about with your badass shirt um, some more about what's going on here. Yeah, so we wanted to replicate kind of what they're doing overseas, you know, very rudimentary, basic weaponry. So what we did is we took a piece of half inch pipe, we welded on an end cap with a fuse hole, and we made some simple legs that you can take on and off, put inside the, the uh, mortar and move around. So very similar to what they're using overseas, very simple. Um, yeah, we just got all open source information and did a lot of research on the internet, looking at what they're doing. Lots of pictures. Um, yeah. So. The, uh, Ideally, we built this one a little more heavy than they probably did overseas just for safety factor, but it would be something similar to this, just not probably to even to this quality, even as simple as this particular mortar is. Yeah, and this isn't going to be fired like a standard mortar. With a regular mortar, you get your gun team, they drop it down, it's a primer that hits and fires it off. This right here is going to operate off of a black powder charge in the bottom where it's going to be okay. Hey, we drop the round in there along with the, the charge and then we'll initiate it from a bit away and it'll fire out and then the projectile will go down range. So again, this is, uh, Cody made this. This is just a ex small example of what he can do. He could have made this thing beautiful like some of the other guns that you built, but this is a prototype uh, for us to do that. We're going to make an 
the, our final one where we get some larger ones, we'll mount it on the back of a trailer and have all kinds of cool stuff to roll down the highway with. Yeah, well, the next one we'll actually have mounted on a an actual tripod with adjustments, yeah. it's a little more refined. Proper T and E. Yeah, this one we wanted something very similar to what they're doing overseas, very rudimentary, very simple, something that you know they could actually manufacture over there, and we're simulating that here. So this is more just like Ahmed. I want to kill those guys over there, but I'm not close enough to get it done. Let's build something for it. And this is what they did. We're not sure what the range is going to be. And this is uh, open-ended testing. We only have two projectiles because we didn't have enough empty propane tanks. Hopefully this first video, will they'll survive enough shots where we can actually load it up with a full round. But again, inshallah, we'll see what happens. And if you have some of these tanks, send them to us. Yes. We could use them. Yep. So, all right. Well, let's see what happens. We only had two projectiles made for this project. So we had to do a good amount of preparation to ensure everything went smoothly. First step was to assemble the cannon, so Cody got to work doing his magic. Once the assembly is complete, we needed to weigh down the projectile to the approximate mass of our live projectile, so we packed the round full of sand. Then, we added our estimated amount of propellant. We decided on a certain amount based on an educated guess. With the hell cannon ready, Sean did the honors of dropping in the projectile, and we set up the cameras to catch the action. Kind of like on Butch Cassidy, the Sundance Kid. You think you used enough dynamite there, Butch? <laughs> we um, we didn't even record it uh, for downrange because we thought that it was going to be like just eh, a little bit. Turned out we must have thrown that thing like 150 meters or so, oh, and it man. went way the hell out there. You could see it like spinning in the air, and then it went down. Yeah, so it, it went um, up very uncontrolled, and then as it got up, yeah, it fell perfectly like a mortar. Like, yeah, it stabilized. Perfect. So we're going to go out there and try to find it, inshallah. Uh, seriously doubt we're gonna find it, but a holy crap that thing went at least a hundred two no, oh, 200 yeah. meters or so I'd yeah. say with just a small charge of black powder So we're gonna try to find it then we'll see what we're gonna do. We've only got one round left. So um, We're gonna have to see if we just want to lob it down range and see if it actually goes boom But we'll see if we can find that other one, but oh my god that was, that was badass. That was awesome. So all right, sorry again. Sorry that we couldn't get the video of that from the um, the way down range, but it was epic all right so let's do it again. The projectile launch went far better than expected and went further than anticipated. It reached a good deal in altitude, then sheared over to the left into some brush. All of us began to search and we then found the projectile and roughly where it came down. All right, so we launched our search party. So we're filming with a phone, so sorry for the crappy video quality in comparison, but we were able to locate the, um, the round and damn, it got jacked up on the way down. We put some sand in there uh, and Cody's idea right before we launched it. So looks like these right here will not be reusable, but um, not quite sure if the damage, like I wonder how much this damage came. I think during... that's from the tree. The yeah. Damage, Cause it looked pretty intact when it was flying. However, I do think that the, the wings and stuff when this can, uh, which was, we didn't talk about, but it's part of our uh, design, pushed through this. It definitely damaged it. But yeah, I think this was from the tree cause I saw it hit this uh, cedar tree or whatever this yeah. is. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's still, if, like I said, it fell down perfectly. So I'm thinking when it hit a first branch, it may have tipped a little sideways and hit. Yeah. It's not, this isn't super thick material. So it's not surprising they got pretty dented up, but you can see the black powder burns all around it, but it performed yeah. to I a mean, T. Because it, it really stabilized in flight as it uh, worked its way down and it came down just like that. Had we had the fuse on there with the explosives, we definitely would have had dead, well, Inshallah, would have had detonation. So I think it's ready to move on to a yeah. full on, like we're not gonna launch this one here in case we have UXO, but we're gonna launch it and uh, with a real live projectile and our fuse on there and you'll see what happens. All right, man, let's do it. Our recovered projectile is ruined, but not to worry as the real one is up next. We filled the projectile with a kilogram of explosive, then fitted it with an impact fuse assembly. All right, so we got the other projectile ready to go. This one is loaded with a kilo of explosive and we got an impact fuse here. Hopefully how this is gonna work is it's gonna fly out, come down, hit the fuse, blow this up like a standard artillery shell, right? Uh, the only difference is though is that this one's a little bit heavier than the one we tested out before. We're not totally sure what the uh, arc is gonna be like, but we're using approximately the same amount of propellant. So we'll see how that goes. But total, this thing is weighing in at about 1.7 kilos. So um well, hopefully you know this works all right but we have the can the mortar here and this actually doesn't constitute the firearm 
but this is the destructive device. So this is the one that has the serial number on it. Um, and, I was, and this one just simply has Cody's uh, chicken scratches on the side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop it in the tube. Uh, we'll first put the propellant, uh, stick a fuse in there, light it off, and inshallah, it kicks off and we have a successful test of this mortar. Let's take a look. Cody got to work in preparing the hell cannon for the main event. He cleared the flash hole of fouling to fit a fuse with a one minute delay. Then he filled the powder chamber with an adjusted amount of propellant to reduce the estimated range and altitude of the projectile. With a big smile, Sean dropped in the round and we stepped back to watch the show. The round worked far better than expected and caught the range on fire. We had to halt our moment of celebration to rush down and fight the flames. Once out, we stepped back and surveyed the damage. One phrase, never been done before. For once, we actually pulled it off. We've been doing all these things for years. Like whenever we do videos, like we try something, it always seems to go to hell. But Jake's fuse went right the first time, a little too right, as y'all can see in the <laughs> around us and in the video, rather spectacular. Um, the, the thing went off and we were like, yay, jumping up and down. And then like, oh crap, we got a fire to put out. So uh, thanks to heroic efforts with, from Cody and Jake and I, we managed to put the fire out without calling the fire department uh, for help. So as you can see, if you, well, kind of looking around here, that there's a uh, empty spot where actually it landed, where it landed and blew all the stuff out um, around it, all the stuff that would burn, and then, of course, lit everything else on fire there, which is kind of funny. But this is uh, really kind of Bugs Bunny-ish, that you can see the fuse sitting right here that um, is the only thing left. And so it landed just perfectly. It was kind of funny whenever it was flying. Um, we, I was like, oh, man, it must not gone off and then I saw it coming just straight down because it turned over and bam went off we got little pieces of the uh, propane tank around here and we've also got our tail feathers right here um, that we're laying what about a meter away from it so just wow we we're really surprised with <laughs> for, for once something we actually did went right the first time and um, yeah as I said before never been done before so we'll go ahead and look around here and survey some of the damage and see what else we got to find we never did find any fragments from the warhead explosion the only thing we recovered was the tail fin assembly and the fusing the burn resulted in a rather large scorched patch in the range that we decided to use as an ideal target for future videos on explosive projectile weapons that we're working on, mainly because the patch is already burnt and we can't burn it any further. The blast area was unburnt and gave us an approximate idea of how large the explosion was on impact, a little over 3 meters at the widest point. In our book, this was a complete success. Alright, well, got Cody here who of course did an amazing job helping us put out the fire and wouldn't be it. We would right now be hanging out with the, the fire department, waiting for them to, um, or well, thanking them for helping us put out the fire without Cody's help. And clearly, man, you did a badass job with this. You were saying this is uh, about your first cannon when you were like, what, 10? Yeah, small little brass one, shot 25 caliber steel shot. So I've been thinking about buying a, uh, like a Napoleon style cannon for a while, but man, this performed so yeah, good. Yeah, like it was, it landed actually pretty accurately yeah, in line with right. what we, we launched it. Um, you'll see in the video where when it recoils, it jumps up as it exits. But, you know, these right here are designed not for a sustained fire. These are shoot and scoot and inshallah. And clearly, by the way, I want to say that me chanting Allah Akbar back in the truck while man in the drone was obviously, you know, Allah Akbar inshallah for um, guiding the round and for assisting us in putting the fire out. So what we're going to do now is to kind of show where we're going. Cody's working on making a bigger mortar for us. 
um, because of course you don't stop with something like this right here. We got our first success, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna show one of the rounds we're working on that we're gonna be doing for a larger scale one. We're gonna go ahead and put that in our blasted pit. We'll set it off and give y'all a taste of what's gonna be coming. And so we'll go make that and blow her up. For the final blast, we excavated a hole we have been working on for our napalm bomb video. To minimize fragmentation issues and to contain a bit of the blast, we decided to place the upscale warhead in it. Also helps us make the hole bigger. We then set up some mannequins nearby to see what kind of damage is expected when the warhead goes off. Alright, so here it is, the coupe de grappe. The biggest charge we were going to set off for this uh, whole experiment on uh, mortars. Ideally, we're going to transition to this size of warhead. The propane tank size ones are they're all right, you know, it's got about a kilo of, of explosive in it. This bad boy's got five kilos of ammonium nitrate based explosive. So we filled it up and then we, uh, with the same idea of explosives that we've been receiving information downrange, uh, you know, we haven't given away all our secrets, but this bad boy is filled almost to the brim. So this is going to give an idea of what the actual ex the explosion is going to be when we launch it from the barrel. It's also going to give us an idea also of the safety dimensions of how far out we need to be when this goes off because we've never set off a warhead like this, you know, specifically. It's going to throw shrapnel everywhere, and that's what these dummies are here for. It's going to give us an idea of what, you know, what to expect. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a uh, standard time fuse with a uh, blasting cap, stick it in there, light it off, get to a safe distance. We've got a bunch of cameras here set, so we can get some uh, uh, good footage of this going off. So let's light this baby off and see what happens. Well, that was a hell of a bang. We've got pieces of the mannequins just scattered all over the place. I mean, man, we have a chance to watch the video because we got to get the hell out of here. Um, but just utter devastation. And I'm going to climb here into this, to our new crater. We've been trying to, oh, trying to dig this thing out um, a lot of different ways for another video. And um, it just totally cratered it in here. And so this is going to be the kind of stuff that we're going to be building up to. We did that smaller one that um, made that pretty good, what, it was about that big or so, I'd say, of an area that it blasted out whenever it landed with a one kilogram charge. This right here was a five kilogram charge that went off. And we're going to be launching that next time, well, next time, pretty soon, with one of the hell cannons that Cody with Weapon Genetics is working on for us. He's already got the pipe sourced for it, so we're going to be working on doing the TNE terrain or terrain elevation adjustments and working up some stuff to see how actually accurate we can get it to be with a predictability of, hey, can we put rounds on target and walk them in from there? So this is just an unlimited opportunity for cool stuff to do. Now, remember our Patreon account because none of this stuff happens for free. But hey, if you're a customer that needs to simulate these kind of threats for um, improvised munitions, factory munitions, or anything else, we can provide that for you. Like these Hell Cannons, we can make those um, in any size. Our only limitation is time and money. We also have our Claymores. We have some RPG simulators we're working on that'll give you the, sh the same shape charge effect and just pretty much anything and everything. So hit us up at info at ordnance-lab.com. And again, hopefully y'all enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Remember to subscribe. And we'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, hit subscribe if you want to see more, and stay tuned for another episode here at Ordnance Lab.